Adam and Jamie have been testing whether you can shoot the gun out of your opponent's hand, leaving them unarmed and unharmed. The unharmed department is not looking so good. That is some nasty damage. And although the bad guys drop their gun in two out of the three positions, Adam is not convinced unarmed is working out either. The gun didn't fall out. He thinks there's a missing human link. But with shooting at each other out of the question, how do they test this safely? We're only testing one metric of the gun holder, which is his grip strength holding onto the gun. And I think there may be other factors involved. Specifically, I want to know what it's like for that shooter when that shock force is applied to the gun. So coming up, one subjective shock force test. And this is Adam's plan. In this test, he's pulling some strings to narrow down the element of surprise. He'll give Jamie an unexpected short, sharp jolt, simulating the shock of having your handgun shot out of your hand. Just don't look that way. I'll look this way. There you go. I'm hoping this simulates to some degree what it's like to hold onto a gun that's been shot. Jamie, you ready? I'm ready. All right, Jamie, hold the gun in the correct orientation. That's great. Now, I'm not going to tell you when I'm going to drop it. It got knocked out of your hand. It did. How did that feel? Well, when you're not expecting it, it's, uh, it's like, pretty aggressive. So the surprise of our little string pull experiment made you drop the gun, eh? It did, but, you know, I somehow imagined that a real bullet hitting the gun would have more sting to it. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. I think I've got a rig in my head that might be able to add that to the mix. OK, then. So what is it like when one of these gets shot out of your hand? I think that it would sting like hell. I think it would be like hitting something hard with a baseball bat. So what I'm going to do is take this pistol, use it as a template to take an aluminum plate, put some gun handles on it, and a big paddle out here. See where I'm going with this? And then I'm going to have Jamie hit that paddle with something like a baseball bat and see how hard it is to hold on. I think I might want to let go immediately. We're getting close. You don't know this about me, but I have a particular penchant for objects that were clearly made for a very specific function, and yet what that function might be has been lost to time. And this definitely falls into that category. <laughs> Ta-da! I can say it without reservation, this is my favorite thing I've ever built for this show. Yeah. If you will hold that. And with a little help from Slugger Heinemann, Adam is going to put his <laughs> new favorite toy to the test. I'm just trying to think, how much damage could I sustain from this? It's just going to sting. OK. <sighs> my eyes are closed. Yeah. No, there's no way you'd be holding on to that thing. God, that hurt. Ah. And here's how much it hurt in glorious, technicolored, thousand frames a second, slow motion. Ow, that looks painful. Yeah, it definitely was a stinging, ringing sensation. Wow. The shock and the pain in Adam's face was really evident, and may I say also really satisfying. But how does that relate to a bullet hitting a gun in terms of energy transfer? Well, on the one hand, we have a bat, 800 grams. It was traveling 85 miles per hour, and that gives us a potential energy of 428 foot-pounds force. On the other hand, we have a bullet, 15 grams, traveling 613 miles per hour, and the potential energy there is 416 foot-pounds force. Those numbers are basically the same, and yet somehow I'm not going to be satisfied unless I get something really close to an actual bullet hitting an actual gun and one of us holding onto it. 